Hello, you join me again, this time with a cup of positivity, and I'm gonna need it this time because again, the bonnet is up on the Fiesta. They don't call it Ford for nothing, it's fix or repair daily. The reason the bonnet is up is because the clutch on my car has gone, like completely gone. I just couldn't put it into gear at all. Uh, luckily, I managed to just bang it into gear and get it home, but that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna try and fix the clutch. Now, I don't have much knowledge on fixing clutches or any kind of mechanic knowledge whatsoever, but I'm gonna give it my best go. Join me along for the ride and let's see if I can actually manage to do this. So in order to get to the bolts that are holding the transmission in, I need to take a lot of things out, such as the battery and its housing. This should now be free to come out. I had to undo a bolt here and here. To remember where they go, I'm gonna take the two bolts and thread them back in. Just need to take this plate out next and then we should be getting closer to the clutch. So, taking three bolts out. It's now loose, but where I've attached the air intake hose with cable ties, they need to get snipped off. Taking the air intake off, I realized that my throttle body looked quite dirty. Now I'm assuming this is just because of the age of the car and there's nothing too wrong. So I'm just putting in some kitchen roll just to make sure nothing goes in there as I don't want any debris or dirt getting in there. This can thick off. Oh, oh. Hopefully those are reusable. I guess we're about to find out. Can you tell I'm already getting annoyed about how many bolts I'm having to take off? My problem still is that, oh no, oh look at that. We're getting there, we're getting there. This thing can move all that way. Okay. So I think I need to unclip this wire, take that bolt out and any other, and take the hosing off. At this point, I'm actually making some good progress and I feel like things are going in the right direction. Just need to take a few more things apart on the top side and then I'm gonna head underneath the car and you're gonna come with me. So under the car, I need to take the clutch linkages out. This is also where the drain and fill parts are to fill up the transmission oil, which I'll use later in the video. This is free and so is this one. Next up on the list, I need to take the suspension system apart so that I can get to the axles. Get into the tie rod ends. It's gonna be. Oh, yeah. That was my hand. At least this came off. Despite taking a chunk off my hand and dropping the bolts, we're making progress. There we go, got it out. You can fix most problems with a good hammer. All right, let me show you what I did. So this obviously comes out. What are you doing to that poor tortoise? Huh? Why are you beating him in the head? He didn't do nothing to you. Oh, don't get the hammer. Oh, you're hitting him in the head, dude. A bit more persuasion. But I got this one out just as well. Oh, that was tiring. Right, next, there's a 32 mil here. Got this thing, it's just absolutely rusty. Definitely need new brake discs <laughs> at some point. By taking the tie rod end out and the lower control arm, it should give the hub enough room to move so that the axle can come out. Now that sounds simple on paper, however, when working with slightly older cars like my one, everything is covered in rust, everything is seized on twice as hard as it should be, and therefore you need to use a pry bar. <laughs> Even with a pry bar and some applied physics, it still can be a difficult time to get these things out. Ah, you fuck. Where's my fingers? Oh. Oh, it's separate. Yes. We're getting somewhere. Before I take the axles out, the oil needs to be drained. Now with that done, it's time to get the axles out. Simpler said than done, again, they're seized in. So again, we're gonna have to call in our dear friend, Mr. Hammer, this time in the form of a rubber mallet. The rubber mallet did absolutely nothing. So what I had to do, I had to order a specialist tool 
that bolts onto the hub and then drills it basically out. It's a really cool looking tool and I'm gonna show you just how it works. Right, so it's all connected in. Just need to tighten this and hopefully it pushes out. Let's see if this works. Unfortunately with a ratchet, the whole disc just spins so you need to use an impact driver. This axle in particular was really badly seized in there, but luckily this tool made it light work. Here it is. You see this one's maybe not as badly rusted, but it's still pretty bad. Okay, so back under we go, and now to remove the axle on the driver's side, we just need to remove this one bracket and then it should come out. Come out. Oh, that's two for two. Oh, that feels good. Now I've got to remove a bazillion different bolts to actually separate the transmission from the engine so that I can get to the clutch. I was trying to get them separated, but turns out I missed another bolt there, which I just need to pull out. And it did shift the whole lot, and I can already see it starting to separate. So now comes the scary bit. As you can see, it started to separate. So all I've got to do now is just wiggle it out and lower down the transmission. That could have gone a little bit smoother, but I don't know if you can see, the clutch is there. However, I don't think you're meant to support your transmission like this. <laughs> With the transmission out, I can now see the clutch and it's time to undo more bolts, of course, and take the clutch and flywheel out of the engine. Right, I removed the clutch and um, so this is this bit and I'll come back to that. This looks all right. The flywheel actually doesn't look too bad, thankfully. This doesn't look too bad either. Not that I'm gonna reuse it, but this, however, there's, I don't know if you can see in there, but this spring has full on broken they shouldn't move at all this is actually broken into two bits no idea what causes a clutch spring to break uh, no idea what that actually means but I do know it's probably not a good thing and it's probably why the engine wasn't going into gear right next I need to take off this flywheel and I'm actually gonna take it to a machine shop to get it skimmed so that it's perfect and so that when I put the new clutch on they pair together really nicely Okay, while I'm waiting for the flywheel, I'm going to put in the new slave cylinder, at least that's what I think it's called anyway, which goes in the kind of centre part of this transmission. You can see it's had a decent bit of wear, it wasn't leaking or anything, but I might as well replace it while I'm here. And a new one. Just got the flywheel back and boy does this thing look shiny. Definitely worth getting it done, it looks 10 times better. Using a torque wrench, I got the new flywheel back in and now it's time to put the clutch in. Annoyingly, I didn't have a centering tool for the clutch, but I did manage to just use the bolt from the tool I showed earlier in the video and that seemed to work at getting it centered just as well. Now time to get the transmission, the big hunk of metal, back in the car. I didn't show this on the camera, but I did actually have a load of issues trying to get it back in with a normal jack. So I bit the bullet and I just went and bought a proper transmission jack, which made it so much easier. Just as a little update, I think, I think I've got it paired up. I've got a bolt holding it together at the moment. Just gonna try and get the rest of it all mounted and bolted in. My God, that was a pain in the ass. Lower mount is in. So what I've got to do is just make sure all the bolts holding it from uh, this direction and also the bolts at the underneath holding it in that direction so the transmission and the engine are together. With all of the engine to transmission bolts torqued back up it's now time to get the axles back into the car and put the suspension back together. Yeah. 
yeah, don't try and push the bolt through in the lower control arm when it's not pushed up all the way because you mess up the bolt pretty bad like I did. Oh well, I've got some spare bolts here. I'm gonna put these in and hopefully these will do the job. With both axles put back in and the suspension back together, the next thing to do is put in some new gear oil into the transmission. So it took about 2.2 liters of gear oil before it started pouring back out the fill hole. That told me that it was fill up and I just need to wait until it gets to a little dribble and then put the fill cap back on. Right, I'm bringing you back for this momentous occasion. This is the last bolt in my tray. Now that means that I didn't forget any bolts, which I did think I might do at one point. Let's get the final bits back in the car and get this thing back on the ground where it belongs. Regardless now whether the clutch works or not, I'm just happy that this thing is back on the ground where it belongs. With the car now back on the ground, the next thing I need to do is add in some DOT4 clutch and brake fluid directly into the slave cylinder through the little filling nib. Despite the rain, I think that's it done. I genuinely think that's everything. So next step is to turn it on and test if the gears actually work. We're, we're in the car. I think I've done everything. Fingers crossed, because this is the moment of truth. Let's hope it even starts up first off. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna put the key in. Gonna now turn the engine on. Sounds a little bit unhappy. Okay, it started up a bit funny. I'm gonna put that down to the fact it's not been starting quite a few weeks and it's kind of been set up on jack stands. It doesn't seem to be happy even in neutral. I'm hoping it's just the fact it's not been started in a while. So what I'm gonna do is put the, put the clutch down all the way. So that clutch felt super soft. I'm gonna try and put it into reverse. So it goes into reverse fine. So what I'm gonna do now is push the clutch in four or five times. Right, 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 okay, here we go. Gonna put it into first now. Goes into first. Before, I couldn't even do this. When the engine was on, I couldn't put it into any gears. Oh my God, you don't understand how happy this makes me. Fourth, fifth. <laughs> yes, come on. <laughs> oh my God, right. You're meant to wait 30 seconds and give it a go again. So what I'm gonna do quickly while that's doing that, I'm gonna check that I haven't got any like awful leaks or anything like that. Let me lift the bonnet. Let me go out and check, then I'll come and do it all over again. All right. Let's have a look. We're still, all the air things in now, the battery's on. You honestly, you don't understand how happy I am right now. What I'm gonna try now, uh, there is, I've got a tiny bit of room behind me. When I put it into reverse, what I have noticed is that I'm putting into reverse and my reverse sensors aren't coming on. Now, when I took the transmission out, I've got a feeling I may have messed up the reverse light cable that goes into the transmission. So the fact that I haven't got any reverse sensors on right now is kind of telling me that that is the case. Um, what that means is I'm not gonna have any reverse light out of the back, my sensors won't be working. So I'm gonna have to look to see if I can get that sorted. But as long as the car's running and I can drive it, that's the most important. Right, I'm gonna put it into reverse, and now I'm gonna slowly release up on the clutch and see if it actually bites. Come on, 
this is the real test. I can feel it moving. Yes! <laughs> right, let's let's go for first. Let's see if we can roll it forwards on first. <laughs> it fucking works. <laughs> Oh, we're rolling. Right, I'm gonna do a little, a little spin of the block. Oh, oh, those brakes, those brakes need. There's, there was so much rust that built up on those brakes. Honestly, the fact that it couldn't drive before, I literally could not get it in gear before, and now I can. Yep, the brakes feel good. The brakes feel a lot better. Um, just in terms of the actual pedal but yeah that's a quick spin round and I think we're good I might might take it into the mechanics see if they can help me out um, getting this maybe suspension sorted and that's it oh wait let's get the wipers oh yeah yeah I mean thank you if you've watched this far in the video um, having your guys support while I'm doing stuff like this to my car is honestly it, it makes a huge difference um there was so many times throughout this where i thought that's it i, I give up like it, it got really tough at some points um and i ended up having to spend a bit more money spend a bit more time but i i saw it through because I, I i wanted to do it by myself i wanted to be able to say i changed my clutch i got my car working again and I can say that without a doubt that the car wasn't running before. I couldn't get it into gear. Now I can. If then there may be some other things that now need fixing, well, it doesn't matter because the car's running. I can actually take it somewhere now. So I can't tell you how happy I am. But yeah, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully when we're not fixing things.